Okay, hi, welcome everyone to our GoForms office hours. Updates you may have missed. Um, just a few housekeeping items before we get started. This webinar will be recorded and shared with all of you who registered and will be sharing a blog post to our blog. So um, anyone in your organization can access the recording afterwards. And we have a, a question and answer section in the lower left hand corner of your Zoom screen. You can submit your questions and we are going to answer some of those questions at the end. All right. Oops. Perfect. So um, I'm Alicia and I am the director of customer success here at GoForms. I work with a lot of our customers um, and I also manage our support and professional services teams. And I am joined here today by Kelsey. Hey guys, I'm Kelsey Griswold. I'm the Senior Director of Product Management. I run our product team, work very closely with our engineering, our customer success, and our sales teams in order to build what GoForms is today. And we're going to be presenting some of the new updates we've put out recently, and then what's coming next. Awesome. So we'll be covering recently released updates that are already in everyone's accounts, um, upcoming releases, and then we're going to do a question and answer section. All right, let's dive in. So let's talk about what's been recently released at GoForms. Um, our biggest release recently in the last quarter has been our workflow updates. We're really excited about what we are able to present to you guys with the workflow tool and the power that it can provide for your accounts. There's a couple of different changes we made, so a couple of redesigns and some more functionality available to you within your workflow account. Workflows is a tool that's used to build automations within GoForms. So when you fill out a form, for example, you can automatically send that form to upload to your Google Drive or send an email with a PDF of that form to whoever you'd like to send it to. All of that is powered by our workflow engine. The first update we made was uh, redesigning our workflow recipe library. We'll demo all of this um, in just a minute here, but the, the workflow recipe library is the best place to go to get started with workflow. These are pre-made, pre-canned, put together workflows for you with the steps already set up for you. As soon as you click on it, you'll see even the workflow variables um, that can be generically placed are gonna be present in that workflow. All you have to do is set in your unique information like where you'd like the email to go or where you'd like to upload it in your Google Drive folder. Um, and then you'll be off to the races using these workflow recipe libraries. The second thing we did is we redesigned our connected apps page. When starting with workflow, connected apps is the first place you're going to go because this is how you're able to connect to a third party partner. So you can do lots of stuff in, with workflow within GoForms, like sending an email or updating a form. But if you want to interact with a third party app, like a Google Drive, a Dropbox, a Box, um, then you're going to have to connect that app first. So we made a, our page much more easier to use and much more clear and a better place for you to be able to manage these connections that you have in your account. So I'll show you guys what this is going to look like too. And then the third update that we made is we made workflow more available. We see the power of workflow. We see the advantage of using these automations with your forms and within your own personal workflows of your business today. So we wanted to make it more available for you guys. At Team, now you can use the workflow tool um, with some triggers that are limited to what you can do within GoForms. So that's gonna include things like the form completed trigger, that's gonna include receiving a form transfer and form deleted. A trigger is what starts a workflow. So this is really where you're gonna be kicking off that automation based off of those triggers. Also at the team level, you'll be able to upload files to a cloud storage platform. So that's gonna include things like Box, Dropbox, Google Workspace. You can export your forms as a PDF. You can pull the images from those image fields on your form, and then you can send the form PDFs via email. All of these things can be done by creating either a custom workflow or using those recipes that I spoke about earlier. Then once we get up to the advanced tier, you can do all that you can do a team, but now you're doing things where you're actually using the data that's in the form. You're no longer just viewing the PDF, but you can add that data to third-party spreadsheets like a Google Sheet or an Excel spreadsheet. You can create a new form within GoForms based off of the data that you have of a previous form all through workflow. You can create a public form, you can export your reports as a CSV, and you can pull from file attachments. So now you can include the file attachments you're including on your file attachment fields on your workflows at the advanced level. We also have some additional triggers available for you at the advanced level, which is schedule trigger. So this can run on a preset schedule that you would like. Form, uh, and then the public form submission uh, trigger. This is where if a public form comes into you, 
you can now trigger a workflow to notify somebody, for example, that, hey, this public form has been submitted. You need to go review it and sign off on it. Or you can have a public form submitted to you and then upload it to a, a third party um, cloud storage platform if you'd like it to. And then we have our app connections. Again, we'll show you what this app connection page looks like, um, but we do have an overgrowing and expanding list of app connections that will be available to you guys now starting a team and then moving up through advanced and enterprise. So let's get into the demo. So going into GoForms here, you're just gonna navigate to your workflows tab. Here's the same page that you guys see already if you're already leveraging our workflow tool. So it's gonna be a list of the workflows that you have available to you. Changes come when you hit create. So now when you're in a workflow and you're going to hit create, you're gonna be taken directly to this workflow recipe library. Here you'll see a list of the recipes that I was talking about. So these are those pre-made recipes that once you click on it, it's gonna take you into the workflow editor, but it's already gonna give you that head start on how you can build the automation that you're looking to build. We have any uh, we have recipes from inside GoForms actions, so like email uh, a completed form or email a scheduled report, or recipes for uploading a file like a box file upload, Dropbox file upload, Google Drive file upload. You'll see recipes for the apps that you have connected. You may also see some recipes from apps that you don't have connected. This is meant to allow you to explore what it is that we have to offer at GoForms. And if you are using a Procore or Salesforce, for example, how you can talk to our team about getting access to those app connections and moving forward with an integration using GoForms workflows. So when you're using a recipe, you just click on the recipe card that you see here, and it takes you straight into that workflow builder. You'll notice a couple of different a uh, couple different differences um, now if you have been using workflow before this update. First one is, is you now have the ability to add a step. This is gonna be true from team all the way up to enterprise. So you can start with your, with your workflow, which is what we recommend because it's the fastest way to get started with workflows, especially if this use case, something simple like just wanting to email a form after a form is completed. All of this information will already be pre-filled for you. So you really don't need to do a ton to set up this workflow. You're really just gonna be adding in any unique information for what you want this workflow to do. In the form completed step, it's where you choose what template you'd like to send it from. It doesn't have to be chosen here. You can choose to send it from any template. So anytime any form from any template is completed, this workflow will be completed or will be triggered. You can also select who it should be completed by. So anyone or any of your users or any of your groups. The export uh, form to PDF step is already configured for you unless you wanna add some sort of advanced settings. You can go in here and choose the pages you'd like to export or add advanced settings here. And then finally, that send email step is already set for you here to be able to add your custom information to. So who would you like to send it to? This can be data from the form that you're sending or it can be a set email address if you'd like. You can also do CCs or BCCs in the same fashion coming from either the form data or a set email address that you'd like to send it to. You're then gonna enter in the subject. Again, this can be custom based off of what the form data is presenting, or you can have it set. And then the body where you can also use workflow variables as well. And then finally, we're already populating in this recipe what file should be attached when you're sending off this email. All of this happens when you use a recipe and makes it a lot faster for you to get started when using GoForms workflows. Now you can also add a step here. So say I would like this workflow to complete a form, start by completing a form, then export the form as a PDF, send an email, and then I also want it to upload to my Google workspace. I can add that step now. Previously, you wouldn't be able to add that step. We would just keep it at the recipe. This gives you guys a lot more flexibility on the automations that can be done within a single workflow. So if there's multiple steps or multiple things you'd like this workflow to accomplish, you can now do it within a single workflow. GoForms uh, provides a list of the different steps that you can based off of where these steps are gonna be interacting with. So GoForms are gonna be steps within GoForms, whereas any kind of actions with a third-party partner like a BIM 360, a Box or Dropbox are gonna be categorized under those apps themselves within this add step modal. You'll hit next, and then you'll be able to see a list of the available steps that you can do for this particular app. Now this will be different per tier. Um, you will be able to see the ones that aren't available at your particular tier. Again, the purpose of this is to allow you to explore, give you as much that you can explore and see exactly what GoForms can do and the power that it can provide to your automations. 
And then talking to our team, if it's something that you're interested in, we can set up a trial for you to try them out, enable them for your account for a short period of time, or just talk to our sales team about exactly what it is that you can do with GoForms automations. You just may not be able to do on your own, but we wanted to give you at least a taste of it here so you guys can explore a little bit more. For this purpose, I'm gonna choose the upload file step because that's what I would like to do. And then I can go through the steps of configuring my step here. This workflow will now say, once I save it, it'll now start with the completed form, export the form to PDF, send the email, then upload the file, all within the same workflow. Now let's jump back a little bit. I'm not gonna save that one and go over to our connected apps page. This is where you manage your connected apps. So you'll see I have my Google Workspace connected um, app here. This is connected to one of my accounts at Google. You can connect as many accounts as you would like. It's also the best place for you to both explore available connections. At the top, it's going to show my connections that I'm using today. But then at the bottom, it's going to show me what available connections I have, or I can manage the connections that I have. You'll see there was a little red box on my, or a little red uh, triangle on my box connections because two of my connections are no longer authenticated. So that means an action needs to be taken by me as the admin on this account controlling these, uh, these connections to go in and reconnect or re-authenticate these connections. If it's green, that means that you're good to go. You can look at the various data that you have on this account, like the details around it, what workflows are associated with or using this connection, or of course, connect it or delete it if you would like. So finally, what I'll show you guys is how you create a custom workflow. Again, this is available for team all the way up to enterprise. To create a custom workflow, you're just gonna click that button up at the top right. I did that a little quick, let me hop back. This create custom here allows you to essentially skip the step of the recipe and just start with a blank workflow editor here. And the first thing you're gonna do is choose your trigger. Similar to that add step modal I showed previously, you'll have a list of the triggers that are available for you at your tier. You can go in here, select the trigger. It has a little explanation of exactly what this trigger does, how it works. Once I select it and I hit add, then I will be able to start configuring my workflow. So the first step is always a trigger, and then you can add your custom steps beyond that using that same add step modal that I showed before. Finally, if you see something on here, if you don't see something on here that you would like to see, so say you're looking for a particular integration or a particular functionality, click this click here button down here. That's gonna take you to a form where you can start interacting with our pro services team and get a little more information about what we can do at GoForms that you may not see listed today um, and what could be coming down the pike with what we can offer in terms of steps, triggers, and a third-party integrations. So I really encourage you guys to check out that link. If it's something you're not seeing here um, in the UI itself, let us know about it. Let us know and see how we can help you. That's it for the demo. Alicia, anything you wanna add? Yeah, um, a few things. So I think this is a, such a great update because in addition to these simple and easy to use uh, recipes that are now available available at all of our paid tiers, team, advanced and enterprise, you can literally go in and create um, a workflow with multiple steps that basically routes your form. Um, you can email, you can upload all in the same workflow, really easy to set up. We not only have that, but we have custom workflows as well. So. Whatever you can dream up, you can basically make it um, in GoForms and they're much more customizable to your process than like template events. So you can dynamically email your completed forms based on certain fields on your form. You can customize your file path um, when you upload to a third party solution, um, ability to add more than one step in a workflow. So export to PDF, send email, upload file all in one workflow versus having to set up like before the update an individual workflow for each one if you didn't have custom workflows and then upload uh, PDFs and photos separately into your third party system. So if you have photos on your on your forms that you want to add into additional folder or route somewhere else, you can do that with our workflows now. Awesome. And one other key benefit to using workflows over our template events is we do keep a full job history and workflow history of the changes of a workflow. So now you could be able to go in and see if this workflow is running properly, see what may be going wrong and how you can fix it by identifying the error that's shown and going in and looking at the step that may be causing that error. It gives you a lot more information, a lot more control over what it is your workflow is doing and how you can troubleshoot it on your side. Mm -hmm. 
And if anyone has any questions, we, before we did the update, we've been working on a lot of help articles and videos. So at help.goforms.com, we have help articles, step-by-steps videos that um, you guys can watch and we'll guide you through how to set up um, some of these workflows. Awesome. All right, next update. We have released single sign-on for all of our users. This is for all new users who are signing up with GoForms and for existing users. This is the ability to create an account and then sign into your account using either Google, Microsoft, or Apple. This is separate from custom SSO, which is typically more engaging with your company's custom SSO or single sign-on solution um, that is enforced by your IT team. This is more the general SSO sign-on functionality. You have a Google account already, you're interested in trying GoForms, or you just want a really simple way to log in with GoForms, you can connect your Google account with your GoForms account and log in using Google, Microsoft, or Apple. This allows for a much quicker both sign up to in order to explore and get to know GoForms a little bit better. It allows for the authentication to remain with the companies like Google, Microsoft, or Apple that you're using across the board for, for likely many websites or many apps. You can use that login information with um, that you already have set up with those three companies. And then as the admins, you guys can control if you want your team members to be able to have access to these single sign-ons. Here in this page, you'll see here on our, our uh, profile settings page, if you're an admin, you can go in and you can enable different ways that you'd like your team members to be able to interact with single sign-on. So say you really just want them to use their GoForms login. They'll still have the ability to use their username and their password that's set up with GoForms um, if they have one set up already. Then you can just disable Google, Microsoft, and Apple and say, I don't want you guys to use SSO. You have full control over what they can log in with. You do have to have one of these enabled. It doesn't have to be the GoForms one. So say you would like your team members, your, your company's already using Microsoft login um, for everything that you guys do. You'd like them to also log in to GoForms using their Microsoft login. You can disable each of these and you can choose for Microsoft to be their only option to go and log in. This creates a really seamless experience when getting access to GoForms either from the mobile apps or from the web app as they're logging in. Let's see, actually we'll jump forward. A couple other updates to the admin updates here. Um, we did add a few minor updates that should be helpful to helping you guys see what's going on with your accounts going uh, today. The first one is when you export your users from the users and groups page, you'll now be able to see the last login date of those users. This is helpful, we found with a lot of customers because they wanna make sure that their team is logging in at the appropriate time, or they wanna to check to see, hey, did you guys log in on Thursday and you haven't logged in um, since? You need to be logging in and filling out that form while you guys are in the field. This will give you that more in-depth information when you export those users. It'll be present in the column on the CSV export. Um, we would love to hear your feedback and in interacting with this if it's something that we should include in the UI as well. Um, it is something we're considering. So as you guys use that tool and use that information, we'd love to hear about how it's, help it's helping you understand how your users are using GoForms. We've also added the ability to have my profile settings. So this is for across the board for all customers or all users of GoForms. From the web app, you can go in and now edit and set uh, particular parts of your profile settings. So you can set your email, your phone number, your last name. You can also set in a picture. So if you'd like to upload a picture, that picture will show when you're in GoForms up here in the top right corner. So it's a little bit of identifier, a little bit of a unique uh, way to show that's who I'm logged in with as GoForms. Um, and then you can also choose where you'd like your landing page to be. The other thing you can do within my profile settings is choose what kind of notifications you would like to receive. So would you like to receive them in app? Would you like to see them email? Would you like to see them both? And then as an admin, you'll have access to account details. This is where you start to uh, do details that are gonna impact the entire account. Only admins have control of this. This is where the authentication provider settings are going to be, security settings, like choosing if you would like your password, um, the your user's passwords to expire every 90 days or not, or managing your users and groups or subscription and billing as you did before. You can also view the usage metrics so you can see a little bit more information about how your GoForms account is being used by your users, like with form completes, public forms, or workflow runs. Alicia, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, awesome. I think these are great updates um, for our admins out there because um, SSO, I know we all run like through Google or Microsoft, we run through our email. So um, you can 
yeah, provide that end, that seamless end user experience where they just log in through something they're already familiar with makes it much quicker, much easier, especially for people in the field. And then admins can control how they, the end users log can and can't log in. For the um, metrics and last logins, this is actually a request we got a lot from admins in support where they'd be wondering, wanting to know how many forms did my users fill out yesterday? Who logged in? Who didn't? You know, someone in the field, are they filling out their forms? Um, now we provide that in our admin settings. Awesome. Perfect. So um, we, our marketing team, product team, and customer success teams were busy at work um, with our GoForms University course this quarter. Um, so this course is perfect for learning the fundamentals of GoForms. Um, the course is perfect for training new and old users, especially admins that are looking to level up their GoForm skills and new customers that are wanting to know the basics of how to run a GoForms account and how to build templates and fill out forms. And it is actually shareable on your LinkedIn, so you can get a little GoForms certified badge. Um, this course covers everything from what is digital forms, what is the difference between forms and templates, which is the building blocks of your GoForms account, how to navigate the GoForms platform, how to um, build templates with the basics, filling out forms online, and it has a mobile apps portion. So filling out forms in the mobile app. I would recommend this for all administrators to just get that basic GoForms knowledge so you can feel empowered to teach your end users and also make tweaks and really level up your GoForms account. Awesome, so we'll show you guys how you can get there. So if you just go to our GoForms, marketing website here. It's goforms.com. This is the best place where you guys can go to get access to our cert course. You're just going to pop up here to resources. Click here, go to eBooks, guides, and more. This will take you to our resource center. There's lots of really great resources in here, especially to learn about GoForms and learn about how it works. You scroll down just a little bit here. Oops, scroll down too much. <laughs> You'll get to the GoForms University. So as soon as you click on GoForms University card here, it's gonna take you into our GoForms University CERT course. So here's where you guys can sign up, access the course, and you'll be returning back to this place in order to go through the different steps of the course and ultimately get GoForms certified. Awesome. Perfect. Um, so these are our new releases that are upcoming and coming soon. So Kelsey, do you wanna start with our first sneak peek? Yeah. So we talked a little bit about this last time, but I want to go a little bit more in depth because this is coming very soon to our GoForms platform. It's going to be available again for all paid tiers going up from team all the way through enterprise. This is our eSign compliant e-signature fields. So we are going to be releasing two new field types, the eSign signature field and eSign initials field that will be eSign Act compliant. These can be used inside and outside of your organization. So you guys will be able to use them as GoForms users, have your GoForms users e-sign a form and have it be e-sign compliant following the different steps and uh, re re requirements for the e-sign act in order to be e-sign compliant. And you can do this outside of your organization using form-based public forms. So you can create a public link of an existing form, send it out either by text message or by email to the signer, and then have them fill out an e-sign uh, field on that form, making it e-sign compliant. These are legally binding documents. This is the best place for you to use, best signature field for you to use when you need a document to be legally binding and have that backing of the e-sign act. These are things like contracts, invoices, registrations, NDAs, incident reports, HR forms, and lots more. There are tons of unique use cases for why you would need an e-signature. Now with these two new field types, you can fulfill those with GoForms. You can collect them without hassle. It's gonna be very similar to the experience of collecting data that you have today with GoForms. It's a, since it's a field that gets dragged onto your template, you can do it from form view or list view. So you can drag them onto your template, send it out to whoever needs to sign it, send it to them directly or assign the form to the GoForms user that you have that you'd like to e-sign and easily collect that information back just like you do with other data uh, through GoForms. So we're really excited about this coming out soon. Mm -hmm. It will be in your accounts here shortly. We're just adding a couple of final touches, doing some final testing and some final um, education internally. And then we'll be able to go be off to the races with our e-sign fields. 
I think this really establishes GoForms where now we provide so many different ways to collect signatures and forms. So uh, e-sign, you can use a regular signature form um, public with public forms or within your account, a user that you have in your account can sign dig uh, digitally or with e-sign. So any, basically we cover all use cases now. No excuse not to have a form and go forms now that we have e-sign. Yeah, and I also would like to mention it's gonna be available on the mobile apps, both online and offline. So like Alicia said, there's really no reason why you couldn't use the e-sign as long as you need it. Uh, we do still offer our signature field as well. So the signature field will be available in addition to our e-sign fields. So really you can choose what level of compliance you need for your particular form and go get that data. All right, the second thing we have coming up is a really great one that we're very excited to be able to provide. This is template elements. When, when uploading a form or creating your first form view within GoForms, you start with a PDF, a PDF that you already have of your form, then you're dragging fields on top of it. Sometimes our customers find that maybe they don't have the right information on their PDF today. So they have to go take that PDF out of GoForms, edit it somewhere else, then re-upload it. Template Elements allows you to add to your PDF background uh, separately from your fields. This is where you have a form view PDF uploaded and you have a space for a logo that you'd like to put in there. You can now drag a static image onto your background of your PDF and choose what you want that image to be. So it'd be your logo, it could be a different image, whatever you'd like it to be, and add it to that background PDF. So then when you switch over to the field view and you start adding in your fields on top of the form, that image that you just added as the background of your PDF is now part of the background of PDF and you can build your form as you do today. This is the same is gonna be true for lines, texts that you can drag on. So say you need to drag on things like a description text or something to give context to the form that you're using and it's not currently available on the background of your PDF, you can drag this on and add it and give the context to your form users so that they're able to see what's going on in the background of their, of their form, just like they do today when they're looking at a PDF form view and filling out the form. I do want to make sure we're really clear here that this is not editing the existing PDF, meaning if you have an image on the PDF already, you cannot remove that image in GoForms and then add a new one. But if you have a space on your form when you upload it in the PDF and you, you add a static image from the GoForms template elements builder, then you can then change out that image. It just won't edit the background of your PDF that you start with. It's editing it moving forward. But this is one that we are currently working on. We're doing a lot of testing. It's a pretty critical update and it's a pretty sh a big shift in how we are using our template editor today. So doing a lot of testing on this. If you have interest in this project um, or you wanna learn more about this project that we're currently working on, please reach out, let us know. We would love to talk to you, uh, learn more about your use case, learn more about how you would use something like this. And then we'll be able to get it out into production with our teams um, here, hopefully shortly. Awesome, I'm really excited about this because I think adding logos, lines, clarification for your end users, especially the uh, clarification text or um, maybe adding some extra spice with a logo to your PDF is gonna make um, the digital forms and it's gonna make it a lot more papery on a mobile device, if that makes sense, um, for your end users. Perfect. Okay. okay, we have some questions and answers. So we're gonna take um, some questions from the audience now. If you do have a question, again, the question and answer portion is in your lower left-hand cor corner where it says Q&A um, with the chat. So get your questions um, in so Kelsey and I can answer them. So Kelsey, the first question we have from the audience is, what is the primary benefit of account admins enabling the new SSO functions for normal users? Yeah, there's lots of benefits for it. Um, the biggest benefit you'll see is if you're already using one of those accounts. So if you're already using Google um, as your single sign-on or as your primary account for your employees, this just makes it all that much easier for them to access GoForms. They're already using Google through Gmail or Google Calendar. Now they can go log into GoForms using that same Google login, making it much faster and more seamless for you as an admin and also for them as a user. There's also a good benefit in just the ease of use of getting access into GoForms. They don't have to remember their password. Um, they don't have to enter it in every single time. 
they'll just use the single sign-on experience. So say they click on Google or Microsoft or Apple, they'll take them to the sign-on page. They're likely already signed into this in some capacity. So they just go need to auth authenticate their login into GoForms and boom, they're in GoForms. So it's really a much quicker and more seamless way for them to access GoForms without needing to remember their password or manage their password in that way. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Everyone's always logged into their emails, especially Google account, Microsoft. So makes it a lot easier and people don't have to remember their passwords all the time. I know that's an issue. <laughs> um, I'm always forgetting my password as well. So much easier experience for the end user, especially on mobile devices. So the next question we have is, um, are, is the new eSign functionality going to be usable with public forms so that uh, we can send signable documents to non GoForms users? Yes, you can. You can use them with form-based public forms. So eSign is compliant with a public form link that's generated from an existing form. You will not be able to use eSign with our template-based public forms. Those are the forms that are the public form links that are created based off of a template. And every time they're accessed, it creates a new form. There's really no way for us to be eSign compliant at this time with those template-based public forms. However, with a form-based public form, with an existing form already created, and you create a public link and you send it directly to that user, you'll be able to use eSign compliant fields and gather that data back to you in an eSign compliant way. Awesome. Okay, we have another question about public forms and eSign. Um, is it on our roadmap to consider adding a way to verify if a public link has been viewed um, or if it hasn't been completed within a certain time frame? With the e-signature, yes. this would be an amazing option for our work experience. Yes, definitely something. It's not going to be something that's included in this first release of eSign, but it is something we are very closely considering and seeing what the best way for us to do that is. Essentially, the goal there would be give you guys as much information as you can about what's going on with this link since it is going out to somebody outside of your organization. So we are considering exactly that among other solutions as well that you'll see coming out shortly after the release. Awesome. So one more question, um, well, a question about wor uh, workflows here. Is there going to be a way to run workflows to upload to a SharePoint site anytime soon? Yes, we do have a SharePoint connection. Um, there is some changes in the SharePoint side that we need to work through in terms of how our connection works. But this is something that we do have available today. The reason why we didn't make it available with our recent release of workflow is because of those issues that we're working through from the changes and permissions on the SharePoint side. However, I would encourage you to reach out to our customer success team and our pro services team who can help you get started with that sooner before we make it available for our teams um, in the workflow tool itself. We will include a link to our professional services um, form in the follow-up email. So you can find it there um, and fill it out. And one of our uh, customer success and professional services members will reach out. Um, so we have a question here, another question about workflows. Uh, does the workflow trigger proceed um, by sequence or trigger by the conditions as the event? So I think um, the question is around the workflow triggers and conditions or um, events on the template or yeah. the form itself. This one might be um, easier just to show. So the workflow tool is independent of template events and the workflow triggers work in a way of as soon as this action is completed. So as soon as a form is completed by your designated template and by your designated user or group, then that workflow will automatically kick off. So there is no skip logic in terms of our workflow triggers and they are independent of template events. So if you're using template events alongside with workflows and both are doing the same thing, we would recommend choosing one and we would recommend choosing workflow because it gives you so much more information about what's going on with the actions of this workflow. It gives you those workflow logs and it gives you the ability to troubleshoot and know exactly if something was successful or not. Whereas template events is a little bit more rudimentary where it says, hey, yeah, you can set this up, but if it doesn't run, you don't really have access to the ability to say, why didn't it run? How can I fix it? How can I make sure that this is actually executing? Workflows does the same thing, but it gives you a lot more of that information and the ability to go in and add more to it. So I th think that answers the question. Um, mm -hmm. It does uh, key us up very nicely for our next question, which is what is the difference between template events and workflows? 
Awesome. Yeah. Think of template events as the little brother of workflows. Template events is a really simple way to set up an automation where you need to share a PDF of a particular template. A couple of the key differences between what a template event and a workflow does is a template event is limited in the triggers and limited in the steps that you can do within that template event. So I'll show you guys here with the template event itself. Let me hop into it. In comparison to our workflow tools, you can add a trigger here and you can create a single template event. Now you can add multiple template events, but you can only do certain things with them. So right now they're really great for really, really simple automations you'd like to set up on a per template basis. Whereas with workflow, I can set up this exact template event, but I can have it run for all of my templates if I'd like it to. I could have it run for a specific person and only a specific template if I'd like it to. I can then add things like uploading to that Google Drive um, or next steps within my workflow, accomplishing what the template event does, but also adding to it, making it a more powerful automation and getting more done automatically based off the trigger rather than needing to have multiple things run or doing things in a manual fashion. Awesome. Um, okay, so we have one last question um, before we end today. So can you partially fill out a public form before sending it to somebody? Yes, you can. We highly recommend this because public forms, uh, if you're going to be using them with eSign, most of the time there's already going to need to be data on that form itself. So maybe you're filling up the top part and you're just sending out an invoice that needs to be signed off by your customer. You can create that form in GoForms as the GoForms user, add that data to that top part, then enable the eSign field to be editable when you send it off to that person that needs to sign it. And then you're sending off the form with that pre-filled read-only information that you had set previously. And all they have to do is read it, agree to it, and then e-sign that form itself. And then it'll get sent right back to you. And a copy is also sent to them. So then they always have that historical record of what went on with that form at the time that they signed it. And you have the form back to you to do whatever you need to do with that information. Awesome. Well, that is all of our questions for today. We do have a few announcements um, for the crowd. So um, the GoForm certification course, um, great way to get your introductory introductory um, knowledge of GoForms and get that badge on your LinkedIn. Um, we'll be attending, the GoForms team will be attending Groundbreak in New Orleans and the building show in Toronto in November. So if you're around those cities in person, we would love to see you and come out um, and get to meet some of the team. Um, submit a review on G2 and get rewarded. We are um, collecting G2 reviews. Um, if you guys appreciate um, our, you know, our platform, our customer service, anything like that, leave us a review on G2 and um, get a reward. There is a link that we will be sending out um, in the follow-up email um, that you can use to um, go to G2 and leave us a review. And then always catch up on the latest news by visiting blogs.goforms.com. A lot of great content there, how to's explanations of how our platform works and um, videos. And of course, um, this webinar will be posted there um, later this week. So if you had someone at your organization that couldn't attend, they can um, see the recording there as well. Awesome. Awesome. So any um, questions about these updates or GoForms in general, if you're a current customer, you can reach out to account management at GoForms.com um, forwards to our account management team and your account manager can um, get back to you, schedule a call or um, answer your questions via email. For technical support, um, you can contact our support team at support at GoForms.com or within the intercom bubble within GoForms. It's in the lower uh, right-hand corner. It looks like a little talk sign. Um, our support team is there and there's also articles that you can access through that support bubble. And then if you're brand new to GoForms and you're wanting a demo or just wanting to learn more about the GoForms platform, you can contact our sales team at sales at GoForms.com.